Welcome to the Man of Recaps. This is The Handmaid's Tale, seasons one through four. Now the show features incredibly disturbing content, but I'm not gonna show any or go into too much detail so you can get the story without living through the trauma. Welcome to Gilead, the rebranded name for a near-future America that has descended into a Christian-themed dystopian nightmare. Women, in particular, are the most oppressed group who have lost all personal freedom. Apparently this all started when the world faced a crisis of infertility, so the fertile women in Gilead have been rounded up and put in the red robes as handmaids. This handmaid's tale is the story of June, who we meet in season one as Offred, which is of Fred because she's the property of her commander, Fred Waterford. He and his wife, Serena, being unable to get pregnant, it's their handmaid's job to bear children for them. And so June is forced to take part in the ceremony, a government mandated, got approved rape. So it's an awful life for handmaids, and they can't even trust each other, because any of them could be true believers that are spying for the secret police, the eyes. And so their conversations are nothing but these pious platitudes, blessed be the fruit, praise be. But one day, June and her walking partner Emily decide they can trust each other. In fact, Emily's like, hey, I'm with the resistance, Mayday. Your commander, Fred Waterford's real high up there, see if you can start, like, spying on him. And soon, an opportunity presents itself when he invites her in to play Scrabble. This is super illegal because women aren't allowed to read, but, you know, the rules don't apply to commanders. So things are looking up. June's made contact with the Resistance and now has a mission, but the very next day, Emily's been replaced. They didn't find out she's with the Resistance, just that she's gay, which is very illegal in Gilead, and Emily's disappeared. But June continues her Scrabble games with Fred. He starts opening up to her. In fact, he almost seems like a nice guy. Until it becomes apparent that being nice to her is just a sick power trip for him, and he's a disgusting pig. Soon he gets bored of Scrabble and takes her out on the town to the Brothel Jezebels, an unofficial funhouse for high-ranking commanders. But this is good news for the Resistance, who has a package there June can pick up, so she has to pretend to be into Fred so he'll take her back. And more good news, working at Jezebels is Moira, June's best friend from before the fall. So with Moira's help, June gets the package out, but it's not a bomb or anything. It's a stack of letters written by women all over Gilead telling the truth of how bad it is here. And as for Moira, she decides it's time to escape and makes it to the safety of Canada. Now let's meet Mrs. Waterford, Fred's wife Serena, who sometimes is very nice to June, but other times is incredibly cruel. More than anything though, she really wants a baby, and when June doesn't get pregnant, she finally admits it might be Fred's fault. So she has a secret, very illegal plan to make June try with another man, and she has in mind their driver, Nick, who's a generally nice guy. And June and Nick can't say no here, Serena has all the power over them, so they go through with it. But later, June sneaks down there like, hey boy, I'm ready to take my sexual autonomy back. Let's do it because we want to. And so June and Nick get it on with some passionate consensual sex. Now, like most drivers, Nick does in fact report to the eyes, but he's no true believer. He's just doing what he has to do to survive. And he and June truly fall in love. But by the way, June had a family before Gilead, her husband Luke and daughter Hannah. During their escape, June got caught, but Luke did make it out to Canada and we check on him once in a while. But tragically, their daughter Hannah was also captured, she's been placed with another family, and June is never allowed to see her again. But now Serena's plan worked, and June is pregnant. When a handmaid has a baby, she gives it up to the host family and is immediately reassigned. Now handmaids are trained and overseen by the ants, and the leader here is Aunt Lydia, a real nasty person who's a Gilead true believer. This one woman, Janine, wouldn't submit, so Aunt Lydia punished her severely by taking her eye, and it kind of broke her. Now Janine's taking her baby back and threatens to jump off the bridge with it. June thinks she talked her down, but no, she just handed the baby over and now she jumps! Janine survives the fall, but now she's gonna be executed by having the other handmaid stone her to death. But June's like, no way, not one of our own. So she drops the rock, sorry Aunt Lydia, and all the other handmaids join in, yeah, they're standing up for each other. And so season one ends with a moment of empowerment as handmaids are sticking together. But as season two begins, the punishment is severe. It's like, hey, you thought your life was bad before, we can make it even worse. But the ringleader, June, is being spared the worst of the punishment because she's pregnant. But Aunt Lydia is like, don't get too comfortable. If you misbehave, there's still ways we can punish you. So June's back on her best behavior for now. There's some excitement at her checkup when a nurse leaves her a key to escape. Yes, Nick has arranged an escape plan to get her to Canada. But long story short, it doesn't work. One of the many, many times June almost escapes. Nick covers up his involvement. In fact, for his loyal service to Gilead, he's rewarded with a way too young wife. Long story short, Gilead has horribly brainwashed her, and she thinks it's her fault that Nick won't sleep with her, and she ends up falling in love with one of the other guards, but that's very illegal, and they're both put to death in the public swimming pool. Fred and Serena Waterford take a trip on a diplomatic mission to Canada. Basically, the whole world denounces Gilead, but I mean, it's still got America's military, so they can't do too much about it, and they do need to trade. Serena befriends an agent of the American government in exile. More on him later. The Canada crew, Moira and Luke, do what they can to protest. In fact, Nick finds Luke like, hey, June's alive, she's okay, relatively, and he gives him the package of letters from Gilead, so Luke and Moira put it on the internet, and now the whole world world denounces Gilead even more. 
Later, Nick's able to arrange a meeting between June and her daughter, Hannah. Yeah, mother-daughter reunited. Although, briefly. But just then, Nick's called away, and June finds herself unsupervised near the Canadian border. Yes, it's time to escape. But, oh no, what's this? The baby's coming right now, and June gives birth by herself. A beautiful baby girl. She can't trek through the snow with a newborn, so June comes back, and Serena Waterford's got her baby, Nicole. Now, Commander Waterford's big project is building a fancy new red center, but one of the handmaids doesn't like that, smuggles in a bomb, and blows that place up. Unfortunately, Fred survived, but he's out of commission for a while. But this is bad news, because in Gilead, a commander can go from top dog to executed for treason real quick and bring his whole house down with him. So Serena says he's still working from the hospital, but really she's doing the work and forging his signatures. She brings in June to help because she was an editor, and so for a while, the women are running the show. Now back at the start of the Gilead movement, the Waterfords were a team. In fact, Serena was the rock star. Until the movement shifted to be more about oppressing women, and Serena found herself no longer part of the decision making. And now, in the world she helped create the book she wrote in support of Gilead, it's illegal for her to read. But when Fred gets back, instead of thanking his wife for covering for him, he's real mad and decides to punish her. So Serena's had enough. She gathers up a bunch of commander's wives like, hey, we're loyal to Gilead, but we deserve to be treated a little bit better. And so in a bold act, she pulls out a Bible and reads a passage. But the men of the council were not moved by her bravery, and in fact, they punish her according to the law and cut off her pinky. Serena has often been June's greatest enemy, but now June hopes she can find an ally in her. Now, by the way, we know about handmaids, but infertile women of low status work as domestic servants called Marthas. One night, there's a fire down the street, and the Waterford's Martha, Rita, is like, hey, June, this is a distraction. We're getting you and the baby out. Unfortunately, Serena catches her, but June's like, hey, you just saw how awful Gilead is. You can't possibly want to raise a daughter in this place. And Serena's just in the right mindset to agree. She lets baby Nicole go. So the Martha network helps June escape. It's like, wait here, there's a truck to Canada coming. But first, we gotta go check in on the colonies. Yeah, the colonies are a threat of where you can be banished to. Apparently, some part of America got nuked, and uh, people People are sent here to clean it up and die. And one of the women banished here was June's first friend, Emily. But in the explosion at the Red Center, a lot of handmaids died, so they need replacements. Congrats, Emily, you're a sex slave again. But her new commander is Joseph Lawrence, who's a grumpy professor type, and he's like, look, we don't do the ceremony here. This house is actually kind of chill. Aunt Lydia, though, is not chill, so one day Emily grabs a knife and stabs her. Yeah, and knocks her down the stairs. Commander Lawrence is going to help her escape, so as June's waiting for the Canada truck, now her friend Emily's coming with. But at the last minute, June decides she's staying behind. What, June? No! Yes, her daughter Hannah is still in Gilead, though, and June's decided she's not leaving without her. June's staying behind to help with the resistance, and this is as good a time as any to make fun of the fact that 90% of the show is June dramatically staring at the camera. So now June comes back like, hey, I got the baby to Canada. But Serena, though, is still in some kind of mood. She decides to burn her house down. June's like, yeah, girl, I get it. Let that mother burn. So the Waterford house is toast. June gets transferred to a new commander. She's no longer of Fred. She's now of Joseph. Unfortunately, though, he's not actually a part of the resistance. June tries to convince him he should do more to help. But he's like, yo, there's only so much I can do. He doesn't much care what you get up to, though, as long as it doesn't cause him trouble. So some of the Marthas like to meet up here to talk resistance stuff. And June's like, yo, girls, I'm in. Now, Emily and baby Nicole did make it to the safety of Canada. She meets up with June's husband, Luke, and her best friend Moira, like, hey guys, you're the godparents of this baby now. Remember, right before she escaped, Emily stabbed Aunt Lydia and pushed her down the stairs. But Aunt Lydia survived. She's a tough old bird. And her brush with death did not make her any nicer. If anything, she's worse than ever. Now there's bad blood between the Waterfords. Serena's still mad at Fred for not fighting for her when they cut off her pinky. But when Serena sees a video of baby Nicole in Canada, she regrets her decision to let her go. She wants her back. So they start a propaganda campaign asking Canada to return her to her home. They travel to the capital of Gilead, old Washington, D.C., with the Washington Monument turned into a big cross. And so working on this with Commander Waterford is high commander Winslow. He's a real top dog. And he's living the Gilead dream. He's got like a dozen kids by a dozen different handmaids. This makes June try to reason with Serena, like, hey, you can't possibly want to raise a daughter in this place. But Serena's baby crazy. She's like, yeah, I kind of do though. These two have a big fight in front of the destroyed Lincoln Memorial. June's hoping Serena would be an ally for her, but that ain't gonna happen. So with her husband Fred fighting so hard to get their baby back, things get better between them. They make up. But he's lying to her. They've decided to keep baby Nicole over there because it gives them a lot of political leverage. Now newly stationed in the capital is driver Nick, who's been promoted to a commander himself. He and June are briefly reunited, but he can't really use his newfound powers to help. They're shipping him off to the front of Chicago to brutally quash the rebellion there. Yeah, he's just in too deep. So back in the Boston area, a friend tells June where her daughter Hannah goes to school. June goes to Mrs. Lawrence for help, but she's a reclusive shut-in. She's got some mental issues, including high anxiety. But June convinces her to go 
go for a walk and befriends her enough that she's like, yeah, let's go find your daughter. But with children so rare and valuable, schools are heavily guarded. June can't even see her, just hears her across the wall. To avoid future incidents, they now transferred Hannah far away. Even Commander Lawrence doesn't have the files. But this ordeal's made June realize that she was being selfish, thinking only of her own daughter. All the handmaids have kids around the area. And June's got a new mission. She wants to get them all out. But soon after, they get some visitors on ritual night. Yeah, the higher-ups think it's suspicious that not a single one of his handmaids have ever gotten pregnant. They're here to watch, ensure he does the ritual. And so we thought June's days of being ritualistically raped were over, but it's happening again. He's like, yo, I'm so sorry about this. But she's like, hey, you made this world. Now you gotta live in it. The silver lining, though, after this, he's all in. He's getting his wife out and gonna bring some kids with him. So they put it out through the Martha network to see how many are interested in helping smuggle kids. If they send muffins, it means yes. And we got 52 muffins. Luckily, the resistance has a plane coming in to deliver supplies. So June's gotta go back to the brothel Jezebels to convince the bartender who's running the plane to load it up with kids before he sends it back out. But she's recognized by Commander Winslow. And though she comes up with a pretty good lie for why she's here by herself, there's no way she's getting out of this without having sex with him. But no, she decides to fight back this time, grabs a pen and stabs him with it, then boom, kills this guy. June's gonna be in big trouble though. Luckily, housekeeping's here to help. And luckily, the next day, there's a bigger news story that overshadows his disappearance. Serena finally realized Fred was intentionally keeping Nicole over there for political reasons. So she's been talking to the American CIA to back channel a deal to give up Fred in exchange she can live in Canada, have visitation with baby Nicole. But Fred's like, yo, Serena ain't innocent either. She got immunity for anything that the laws of Gilead forced her to do. But remember, she went outside the law to force June and Nick to have sex so she could take their baby. Though they had a consensual relationship later, that first time, they couldn't say no, so Serena raped them and she's getting justice too. Meanwhile, Mrs. Lawrence is doing worse than ever. And one night, June finds her overdosing. Oh, she's gotta run and get help, but wait. If they call an ambulance, that'll bring more attention on this house than ever, and Operation Children Escape is only a week away. And so June has her Walter White Breaking Bad moment. She leaves the room and pretends she didn't see anything. And so finally, the big day is here. And under the cover of night, the Marthas bring the kids under their charge to the house. And so they journey through the woods, make it to the airport, but no, why is there security here? Jin's like, hey, I'll distract them. You take the kids around the other side. But Janine's like, nah, girl, handmaids stick together, and all the women are throwing rocks to distract him. In the end, Jin's leading this guy away through the woods, and oh, she gets shot. But when he goes to grab her, the boot pistol, blam, gets him. And the plane flies away. The plan worked. Over 50 children safely in Canada. Luke gets the bad news that his wife June is not on the plane, but the bittersweet news that she organized this whole thing, she's a hero. And as for June, she's okay. The bullet just clipped her, and the other handmaids are there to help. But now this group of about a dozen handmaids are extremely wanted on their run, but they make it to the safe house. It's a country estate in the middle of nowhere, so not many visitors. Commander Keyes has gone senile. He has no idea what's happening, so it's his young wife, Mrs. Keyes, who's happy to host some resistance heroes. And you might think a commander's wife has had it better than the handmaids, but she has not. She's also been raped by her husband and all the guards in the area. In fact, they capture one of them, so June strings him up, and it's like, all right, girl, you can kill him. It's like, yeah, girl, get that revenge. But also, June, should you have let the 14-year-old do it? It's complicated, I guess. Pretty soon, June sneaks over to a nearby estate to meet with their Mayday contact. The fugitive handmaids can't stay in any one place for too long, so she's got another safe house lined up for him. But in the meantime, this house is a giant party brothel for high-ranking military commanders. June's like, yo, while we got them all here, we should kill him. Mrs. Keys, being a country girl, knows which berries are poisonous, puts it in the liquor at the party house. Yeah, drink up, commanders. Yeah, June, just winning all over the place. Until back at the house. Oh, what? No, the eyes found him. And leading this mission, the new commander of the eyes, it is Nick. It's like, hey, June, sorry, I'm gonna do what I can to protect you, but I can't stop this. So June's brought to the serious prison where she's reunited with Aunt Lydia, who's very mad at her. The other handmaids moved on before they got there, so they're gonna torture June to find out where they are. Finally, though, they bring out the big guns. Yes, it's June's daughter, Hannah. But she was very young when she was taken away, and it's been like five years. She barely remembers her mom. She's scared of this creepy lady. This is heartbreaking for June. It basically destroys her, but still to protect her daughter, she gives up the other handmaids. Before she leaves, though, Nick managed to arrange a rendezvous for them, and she runs up, and these two start smooching. I mean, as a top commander, he was complicit in her torture, but like also, he still cares about her and wants to protect her. And June knows from their past relationship that he is a good guy. He's just doing what he has to to survive in Gilead, just like the rest of them. So I don't know, it's complicated. So she's back in red. It's handmaid time again. But they get stuck at a train crossing and the guard's like, hey, I'm gonna go out and take a leak. And it's an incredible tense scene as without talking, all these women realize that the only person guarding them right now is Aunt Lydia. So, oh, June grabs her. They're making a break for it. If they get across the tracks in time, they'll have a huge head start. Got a pretty good shot at freedom. Come on, run for it. Oh no, too late. Hit by a train. Out of all those minor character handmaids, we've gotten to know and love over the course of the series. It's only June and Janine who survive. These two decide their best bet is to hop a train headed for Chicago. Remember, that's the front where the resistance is still fighting. And luckily this train is ambushed by 
outside the resistance, so June and Janine off to the war zone of Chicago. Now back in Gilead, Commander Lawrence is in big trouble because it was his handmaid June who helped all those kids escape. So at first they're gonna execute him, but he's still the smartest guy they've got in terms of macroeconomics and international relations, so they decide to keep him alive as a consultant. He's like, look, to improve diplomatic relations, we need a ceasefire on the Chicago border to allow humanitarian aid in. But the other commanders don't wanna listen to him. Meanwhile, Aunt Lydia, after letting those handmaids escape, she's being pushed out, forcibly retired. So she goes to see Commander Lawrence and demands to be reinstated. She's like, hey, I've got all sorts of blackmail on you about stuff you've done that's not legal in Gilead. But Commander Lawrence is like, hey, I have no power here anyway, but do you have blackmail on the other commanders? Indeed she does. So these two use that to get Aunt Lydia reinstated and Commander Lawrence officially back in power. Unfortunately though, right before the ceasefire, they've decided to do one final bombing run. Oh no, June, run girls. June is shell-shocked but alive. And luckily the humanitarian aid's coming in right now. And in fact, the first one here who finds June is her old best friend, Moira. And so it's finally happening after three and a half seasons of torture in Gilead, June has finally made it to Canada. She joins up with the Canada crew, all her friends she helped escape Gilead, including her baby Nicole. And she's reunited with her husband, Luke, who is overjoyed that she's finally free. And by the way, Janine also survived the bombing. And there's another new handmaid here. It is the young Mrs. Keys, Esther. Esther's like, no way, I'm not giving in. Things can't get any worse. But Janine's like, yo girl, look at my eye. Things can get much worse. And so for now, Esther's on her best behavior. Blessed be the fruit and all that. And so June enjoys living in a free society again. But being in Gilead all these years has left its mark. She went through so much trauma, it's gonna take time to adjust. At the Gilead support group for women who made it out, Moira's of the thought that, hey, we gotta move past our trauma. But June's kinda like, why should we move past it? We should get angry. And all the other girls are kinda with her. Now remember, also in Canada are the Waterfords, Fred and Serena. But soon Serena gets some very surprising news. She is pregnant. Last season, these two had an actual tender moment where they got it on. But how is this possible? Serena was thought to be infertile and Fred was also thought to be infertile. It's a miracle, I guess. Serena still rightfully hates Fred, but now they've got a bigger problem because June Osborne is here to testify against them. So June tells her story to the world, basically doing a full seasons one through three recap. So Serena decides they need to present a united front. So they make a deal. Fred tells the international community everything they could possibly want to know about the inner workings of Gilead in exchange for immunity. Yes, Commander Waterford's gonna walk free. And as you might imagine, June is not happy. June goes to the American FBI agent Tuella like, hey, I've got a better offer for you. She set up a meeting with Commander Lawrence. And now that Fred's talking, they really want him back before he can spill more Gilead secrets. They're willing to trade for him 22 prisoners, women that were in the resistance. And Tuella's got to admit, saving all of them is worth more than Fred's intel. And so just as Commander Waterford thinks he's free, it's like, sorry, man, change of plans. They take him back to Gilead, where he's certainly going to be put to death. Nick brings him out into the woods, but he's not killing him because June Osborne is here in person. And she's not alone. She brought all the women of the support group with her. And she's like, you better run. And yes, Commander Waterford running for his life, getting to experience just a taste of what these women have been through. Pretty soon they catch him, and finally, June has him in her power. They beat him to death, and though it's extremely violent, there's nothing complicated about this one. He got what he deserved. It probably will be complicated for Serena, though. We'll see how she reacts. Actually, June sends her a package with Fred's finger. Oh! So after violently beating a man to death, June goes on home and doesn't bother taking a shower. For Luke, this might be too much. He was all good with him getting sent to Gilead and executed, but June doing it herself in such a brutal way? I mean, that's a lot. And June recognizes this. In fact, she says, I'm gonna go. And that's where The Handmaid's Tale Season 4 comes to an end. If you like this recap, hit that subscribe button for more of the best recaps of TV and movies.